Hello everybody and welcome back. This is Judicious Fire. I'm on the iOS server. I'm going to be taking a look at our pets in the game of Castle Clash. I've gotten a couple of requests from uh, subscribers on the channel who have uh, wanted a close look at pets and the way they operate, uh, why they operate that way, uh, when they're on, when they're off, uh, and uh, kind of get an idea of which pets to outfit to which heroes. Uh, I'm gonna be taking a look at that today and uh, I also thought it would be a good idea to uh, take a look at these pets now. I've been putting together a uh, dungeon series through the Insane 8 dungeons. And this is uh, from a, a player standpoint. It really is a grueling experience. I, I'm, I'm thrilled if anyone <laughs> wants to disagree. Uh, if you disagree with the fact that Insane 8 is hard, then I want you on my team, okay? But it is a long process, and I keep checking pets again and again and trying to decide based on which stage in the uh, Insane 8 series uh, is going to require which pets. And I thought to myself, you know, I should really do a pet guide video uh, now before uh, starting to put out those Insane 8 series videos. Uh, so hopefully we're going to be able to uh, satisfy multiple needs all at once here. Our pets... Uh, have been, a, I'd say, a relatively recent addition to Castle Clash. We're looking at about three years ago uh, when they introduced the pet system and the Pet Plaza building. Uh, pet Plaza is a uh, instantaneous building. There's no upgrade time. immediately goes up and into action. Uh, and once you have created the Pet Plaza, you will find yourself approximately six, let's actually count, nine, twelve, 15, 18 pets. We have a 19th pet that is now being introduced across all servers. Uh, that 19th pet is called uh, Hair Force One. And uh, I'll be describing that pet as well. Uh, I am familiar with the pet, even though it has yet to come to iOS. I think that'll probably be later tonight. Um, for pets, uh, you can up your pet levels, upgrade your pets, max them out. Uh, up to level 35 currently as of the date of this uh, recording. Uh, so 35 is your max. Uh, every day you'll receive eggs uh, by completing quest boards. You'll receive your eggs and uh, eggs can also be acquired through various uh, uh, free-to-play events uh, routinely. Uh, most of the pet eggs are a pretty common commodity in Castle Clash, so it is uh, routinely easy, at least doable, to get your pets up to a, a pretty high level. Maybe not necessarily 35, but certainly uh, get them more than halfway upgraded in a relatively short period of time. Uh, when we go into the pet plaza, we see all of our pets. Now there is a uh, pet list, and that's what we're looking at right now. And also, when you click on each individual pet, it will give you a pet description, as well as some numbers letting you know what's going on. Uh, there's another tab also. It is the pet compendium. Uh, each one of these upgrades in the pet compendium can go up to level 35 just like the pets uh, each of these upgrades in the pet compendium represents a bonus in some game mode or aspect of castle clash so if you uh, take the first one for example we have the game mode labyrinth you accumulate points in the labyrinth uh, this pet bonus will allow you to accumulate even more points a 6% bonus at level 1 upgrade, and a 24% bonus in the points that you get in Labyrinth at the level 26 upgrade. Now you see that the level upgrade only goes up to 26, but the bonus level or pet level goes up to 35. So once you have achieved uh, level 26 in this compendium bonus, you cannot go currently any higher than that, even though uh, the bonus itself can go up to 35. You get extra uh, tries in the dungeon. Uh, 
faster speed boost on eggs. You know, when I went through this, when they first introduced the uh, pet system, the very first one that I attempted to focus on was the uh, incubation speed boost because pets were brand new. And I thought, well, if I can hatch eggs uh, at a greater rate, then cumulatively over time, and I, I know this game's going to take years, then over time I'm going to be uh, doing myself a, a good service by getting as many eggs incubated or hatched as possible to upgrade all of the other facets of this system. Uh, so I think that's an extremely important one. I also think that this dungeon entry bonus. Dungeons is there are probably our number one way of accumulating experience in this game through game modes. Uh, also, number one way to get uh, shards. And you need all of these things. They are uh, integral commodities in Castle Clash. So if you are able to get the dungeon, dungeon uh, entry bonus, you get... Uh, I have no idea. I think it's 32, 32 total dungeons. Um, and that's going to be much better than however it is, uh, however many you start with. It could be... Uh, in the low teens, might even be below 10. So try to get it up uh, your dungeon bonus as quickly as possible. You go through that compendium and see which game modes you play or how things can benefit you. Uh, and make your choices based on that. You need extra red crystals, go for that one. Uh, extra shards, it, it, so that there's plenty of choices. Uh, so the pets are not just that. They are a way to augment certain game modes in Castle Clash. Uh, going back to clicking on an individual pet to see what it does. Uh, we have the pet tab at the top. That's where we are right now. And the assistance tab. This assistance tab allows you to assign a pet to a certain hero. Right now, this uh, pet mini Angie at level 35 uh, is assigned to the hero Anubis. If I want to assign this pet to uh, Siren, click on Siren, boom. Siren is now outfitted with the pet Mini Angie. If I want Mini Angie to have no hero attached to uh, she or it, then I would simply double click and now I have a blank spot representing no hero uh, attached to Mini Angie. Uh, as far as the pets go, this is general rule of thumb. Okay, there might be a minute exception. I'm trying to look at this in a, uh, a user-friendly way. We have three different kinds of pets in Castle Clash. The first kind of pet, it activates when your hero attacks people or attacks something, a building, a tower, or an enemy hero. So Anubis, uh, if I want him to... Uh, be attacking, I want to put a, a pet on him that activates when he is attacking. So you've got pet number one, those that work when the hero is attacking. You've got a second kind of pet, the pet that operates when the hero is attacked. The pet will only function if the hero to which it is attached is taking damage, is under direct attack by the enemy. You have a third kind of pet in Castle Clash. And that is a pet that operates all the time under its own will, typically based on a time period. Yeah, every four seconds, this pet will operate or activate its skill. Every eight seconds, this pet will activate its skill. So those pets that operate while the hero is attacking, those that operate while the hero is under attack, and pets that work all the time. Uh, keeping those three categories in mind, let's take a look at these pets. Uh, the very first one I would like to start with is Hair Force One. Uh, Hair Force One, the most recently introduced pet, is a pet that is under category one. Pets that operate when the hero is attacking. If you put Hair Force One on your Anubis, and I am using this particular base design today to show you uh, a couple of things in action. Uh, if I put Hair Force 1 on my Anubis and I'm clicking in the center region of my base, because Hair Force 1 is a pet that will only operate when the hero is attacking, I'm going to find that Hair Force 1 is not operating until Anubis is up there making direct contact with the enemy. 
So as the enemy comes flying in from the sides, let's say it's a here be monsters or a hero trial, or even a Guild Wars attack, a, a raid, when the enemies come flying in from all four sides, they're going to meet the heroes first that are at the corners. But Anubis is right here in the center. And because of that, he's not going to be directly attacking the enemy. Hair Force 1 is not going to be functioning. It would be much better uh, from a pet and hero standpoint to have a pet that is functioning when the hero is under attack or even better yet, a pet that is working all the time. Uh, that will allow the pet to actually make a difference in battle to affect Anubis, to help the team, or to harm the enemy. So Hair Force 1 is going to do damage, uh, stun the enemy, and also have a chance to do a multiplier damage, uh, a few times the amount of regular damage that would have been inflicted. Hair Force 1 is a attack pet. Uh, you want to do damage, this is a perfect pet to use. Uh, it has no defensive capability whatsoever. And again, functions under the category of a hero attacking in combat. Once that happens, Hair Force 1 will operate. Uh, now we go to our remaining uh, pets in the uh, pet plaza. We have ourselves Mini Angie. Now, Mini Angie... Let me get uh, Anubis off of here. Now, Mini Angie is a pet that is under category 3. Uh, probably the best pet to, pet to have... Uh, the pet that operates all the time, regardless of attack or defense. A uh, mini Angie is a healer. Uh, it or she will attack, or excuse me, will heal uh, the hero that has the lowest health at the time. Uh, so whatever hero is doing the worst in that particular situation or at that moment is about to die, uh, that hero is going to get a, uh, a heal. It's going to heal by a certain amount with every one of these pets. The most minute detail aside, but every one of these pets is going to be operating based on the strength of the hero to which it is attached. If I put Mini Angie on a weak, non-upgraded hero, Mini Angie's heal is going to be lessened. It'll be a low heal. If I put Mini Angie or pretty much every pet in Castle Clash on a strong hero, then the pet will become stronger. It will have a greater effect. So as we see up here at the top, and I'm looking at pet attributes, uh, we've got a attack and a speed uh, description. The pet itself doing 9,315 a damage. Now, this is less than accurate. Uh, Mini Angie is not a damage dealer, but this is a base attack. Uh, it would be better to just keep in mind the, the stronger your hero, the better the pet's going to be functioning 99 times out of 100. So we see also a movement speed. Now, if we add a hero, and let's take a Siren, we go back, we see now the hero bonus that goes on to here. We're almost at 30,000. We are at 30,000. Uh, so this healing effect from Mini Angie will be based on the number 30,000. Okay, so we're going to get a really, really strong here heal. Let's take a Siren out, and let's put in somebody with a really high attack. Somebody like Bogeyman. We were at 30,000. Okay, now we're going around 30,200 and some. Uh, not a tremendous difference, but let's look at the words underneath those numbers. This pet is functioning only at 40% of the attack of the hero to which it is attached. So the pet is only going to be uh, working based on a small percentage of your hero. So strong hero, great pet effect. Weak hero, weak pet effect. Mini Angie uh, will give that kind of a heal and will also give a damage reduction of 80%. That'll last for three seconds. 
Now there's a cooldown. So remember cooldowns in Castle Clash. Once the skill begins to operate, we are in second one. The skill is operating. The cooldown has begun. Now in second two, the skill is operating. The cooldown is in second two. Now in second three, the skill is operating. The cooldown is in second three. In the case of Mini Angie, who provides a reduction in damage for three seconds, the skill has now stopped. Second four, we are in cooldown. Second five, second six, still in cooldown. We now reset. Mini Angie is providing the heal and damage reduction. We are at one again. The cooldown in Castle Clash for hero skill and pet skill, it is not added. It is always begun at the exact same time like a count, a countdown clock. So for three out of six seconds, there is going to be that damage reduction applied. Mini Angie is a great uh, pet to have. Operating all the time, giving you a damage reduction, giving you a nice heal. The only thing that I have a, a, an issue with with Mini Angie, and I'm sorry, Mini Angie, uh, it is only doing this heal and damage reduction to one hero. That's it. Let's move on to our next pet. Let's get the uh, lava off there. We have ourselves Yulafant. Yulafant is a, uh, a pet that increases the dodge rate of your heroes. It will uh, increase dodge rate by 30%. So give your heroes a chance to stay out of harm's way and not even get hit at all. So whatever your hero's dodge rate may be, it's going to be increased by 30%. This affects four heroes. Now the heroes have to be in the close proximity of Yulafant. So I'm going to go back to this base design again. Okay, let's say I put Yulafant on Anubis. We'll keep using him as our example. If Yulafant is on Anubis, uh, Yulafant is going to be giving that ability to Anubis, to Walla Walla over here, but it is not going to be reaching out as far as Dove Keeper in the top left-hand corner or Laz in the lower left-hand corner. The heroes have to be nearby, and what nearby is, I haven't uh, measured that directly, but let's just say uh, about 9 to 10 squares away. Uh, one building representing, like this uh, tower here, representing three squares. So, back to uh, our buddy, Yulafant. So, four heroes get a, uh, a dodge increase. Uh, that increase uh, also grants, the effect grants uh, an immunity to being stunned. All those stun towers that uh, keep you frozen in the dungeons, uh, you're going to be able to avoid that. Also, the effect of fear. Uh, somebody like a uh, Vlad Dracula can infect a fear. It's very much like you just standing still and being so afraid that you can't do anything. You just start thumb sucking. So you're going to be immune to that. Now we take a look. This is going to last 4.5 seconds with a cooldown of 6.5 seconds. We don't add them. We start counting at the exact same second at one. So 4.5 seconds of use out of 6.5 seconds. That means for only two seconds are you going to be without the effects of Yulafant. That's very good. Uh, it's going to be, it is what you would call a, a low cooldown uh, pet. Here is the problem with Yulafant. Uh, and I'm going to say there's two problems. Number one, uh, Yulafant only has a 60% chance of this effect actually happening 
only 60% chance of getting this dodge and getting these immunities. So you have to be somebody who's willing to flip the coin. Uh, you have to be somebody who's willing to take that chance. Uh, I would prefer to stay away from things that have a low percentage chance. Uh, I would prefer to stay away from chance in this game altogether and go with sure things. We looked at Minnie Angie. She's always going to operate. You can rely on her. Yulafant, you can't rely on. It's another thing. Yulafant is under category one. A pet that only works when your hero is attacked. Attacked. Actually taking damage. So if we put this on Anubis, it's not going to work. Not until the enemy is right up in Anubis's face. Uh, Anubis is an auto proc hero, but that will not count as a direct attack in this game. Uh, it is only going to be direct attacks. Anubis pounding his fists against walls, buildings, other heroes, love doves, uh, whatever it may be out there in the world of Castle Clash. Anubis has got to actually be in the action for this uh, Yulafant to be working. So that is a limitation and something to keep in mind when choosing your pets. We move on here. We've got ourselves uh, Little Havoc. Little Havoc is a great pet. Uh, Little Havoc is going to reduce the attack ability of your enemy. Now, this will only affect one enemy it doesn't have an area of effect. It doesn't have a multiplication factor to it. It's just one enemy at a time that Little Havoc is going to actually be uh, uh, debuffing. So the enemy's attack is reduced and the enemy's speed of attack is reduced. It takes the enemy uh, uh, three seconds to swing its sword at you. Uh, it will now require... Five and a half seconds approximately for the uh, enemy uh, to be swinging its sword at you. Lowers that attack speed. We see the cooldown of 3.8 seconds. We see that this attack and attack reduction on the enemy lasts for three seconds. It has a very low cooldown time. Second one. Two. Two. Three, attack and attack speed, debuff ends, cooldown, lasts only 0.8 seconds. Keep this in mind. Little Havoc will be functioning repeatedly, routinely, and quickly. Here is the drawback. Just like Yulafant, this pet only has a 60% chance. 60% chance to do the damage, but really what it's designed for, lowering that uh, attack and attack speed. So again, you're going to have to roll the dice. Little Havoc cannot be relied on on each occasion. Uh, so you're going to have to be a little bit uh, of a gambler when it comes to the use of, uh, of Little Havoc. Uh, little Havoc is uh, one of those pets that is under a Category 1. Uh, last uh, pet, I think I misspoke. It was Category 3, those that are attacked. Uh, but Category 1, we've got those heroes that are attacking. If I put Little Havoc, let's go back to the base. Little Havoc on Anubis. Little Havoc isn't going to be doing anything. Because Anubis isn't going to be directly attacking anybody. He's, all, he's inside all these buildings over here. Enemy comes in from the sides. Anubis is not going to be directly attacking. Little Havoc will serve no purpose. Just sit there. Now, if I go up to Dovekeeper here, if I put Little Havoc on Dovekeeper right up here, Little Havoc is going to be operating very well. Little Havoc is going to be uh, hitting any enemy that comes in Dovekeeper's range. So, those pets that operate when the hero is attacking... Uh, are best outfitted on those who are at the edge, the exterior, the perimeter of your defense. Let's look 
a Chickaboom. Chickaboom is a helper in combat. He's a little bit like a, uh, a living uh, missile launcher. He's going to fire off a rocket. That rocket does some damage, yes. But it also has a 20% chance of doing five times that amount of damage. Also, and this is the greatest thing about Chickaboom, the target that it hits is going to take 32% more damage for one second. Uh, this can make the difference in combat. This can make the difference in terms of accruing high scores in particular game modes. Uh, this is an amazing effect to have an enemy take a third more damage. Let's take a look at the operational time. It's going to work every second cooldown time one second chickaboom his abilities match his cooldown time that means every single second this rocket is going to be firing off doing damage having a chance to deal five times that damage and providing you a 32 percent better chance of uh, killing off the enemy quickly. Or, another way of looking at it, making the enemy take 32% more damage. A Chickaboom is one of those heroes that only functions when the hero is attacking. Go back to the base. If I place it on Anubis, he will not be directly attacking anybody who comes in from the sides or perimeter of the screen. Chickaboom's just going to sit there asleep. If I put it on Dovekeeper, Chickaboom's going to keep working throughout the entire battle. I know Dove is going to be taking damage. I know Dove is going to be attacking. I know Dove is going to be surrounded by the enemy as they come flying in from the sides. Chickaboom is somebody that you want to outfit on the exterior heroes. If you have a, a base setup similar to this, uh, if all of your heroes are on the exterior, are on the exterior Chickaboom is great for... Uh, one of those heroes can really help to make a, a great combination of pets that function well with one another. Uh, in something like a game mode like Archdemon, as well as uh, some of the Warden challenges that come our way every once in a while, Chickaboom can make the difference between a lower and a higher score. Simply because... Uh, even in a damage cap mode, even where you, that five times multiplier might not apply, Chickaboom's going to be firing off every second and doing you know, base damage. One second, two second, three second, Chickaboom's going to be working. A great pet to have. Next, we're going to have ourselves Persilot. Uh, Persilot uh, does some damage uh, against the enemy, yes, yeah, sure. But it affects an area it's an area of effect pet uh three up to three bad guys are going to be hit by this uh persilot effect so the damage is going to happen to up to three enemies who are close to one another but better yet the energy regeneration rate of those enemies is going to be lowered by 70 percent a whopping 75 percent the talent scatter uh aries's skill uh the elements of this game that take away a hero's energy corrode for example ashura's innate uh scatter if you will or ability to take away energy uh, that aspect of castle clash is very helpful it will rob the energy from a hero making uh, the hero unable to operate its skill in combat it could be a make or break in the battle Persilot does something very very similar to this Persilot will not take away the energy of the enemy, but it will reduce the enemy's ability to regain or recharge that energy. 
in this case, by 75%. So if you were to place Persilot on a hero, and I'll use Gunslinger, for example. If you put Persilot on somebody like Gunslinger, uh, who is already creating helicopters that have a natural scatter, stealing the energy from the enemy, Persilot will pair with that very well. You've got the nice scatter from the copters, while at the same time, Persilot is preventing the enemy from regaining as much energy. So the two work very, very well with one another. Let's take a look at that uh, operational time and cooldown. For 3.8 out of 5 seconds, Persilot's going to be working. A cooldown time of 1.2 seconds. A very low cooldown time. Persilot is going to be uh, working quickly, often, and well. I think that, uh, it's my opinion, I think that Persilot is it's one of my favorite pets. I have typically uh, paired Persilot with those that have a scatter ability. Uh, Persilot, uh, and don't quote me, may have come out right around the same time, perhaps, as Gunslinger. And I kind of thought that IGG Castle Clash uh, were making that pairing for me. Uh, and I have typically run purse a lot on Gunslinger. I think it works very, very well uh, in those combat situations where you want to keep a, keep the enemy from uh, activating its skill. Another great pairing might be Asura. Uh, anybody who's got some kind of a, a scatter ability, purse a lot's going to be the, the sister or brother to that scatter. Uh, next, we have ourselves... I don't know if I didn't mention, uh, Persilot is one of those heroes uh, that is linked to attack. So if I put it on my buddy Anubis, Persilot's not going to be doing anything to enemies that are coming at me from the perimeter of the base. It would have to be, yet again, uh, on Dovekeeper up here in the top left-hand corner to ensure that the hero to which it is attached is actually attacking the enemy. Let's move on next. Uh, we have Rudolph. Uh, Rudolph is uh, a guy who r removes negative statuses, uh, bad things that happen to us. Now, that can be very helpful. Uh, it does so to four of your heroes on your team, four out of six. But I think better yet, it is a great healer. Uh, it is, in my opinion, the, the second best healing pet that we have in this game. Uh, Rudolph is going to be healing four heroes, but only when the hero is attacked. So that heal uh, does a really nice job, but it is limited to attack. But we'll get back to that in a second. The cooldown on this is 4.2 seconds. So... Uh, you get yourself a heal, a removal of conditions, and then 4.2 seconds later, Rudolph will operate again. So there is a little bit of a wait time, but the healing effect can be so substantial that uh, that time goes by rather quickly. We talked at the very beginning about uh, putting pets, their pet effects, uh, a strong hero means a strong pet effect. Weak hero means a weak pet effect. Uh, this heal is based on the uh, pet attributes and pet attack of what hero it is attached to. Let's attach this Rudolph to Minnow for uh, example. And we see, our, we see that we're going to get 40% of 30,000. Uh, and... That number is then multiplied to a factor of 430%. Uh, that math I'm not able to do in my head, but you're going to get a heck of heal. Rudolph is going to be one of those guys that only restores the health of your team if the hero is under direct attack. So going back to our Anubis example, uh, it's not going to do anything to help your team when the hero is in the interior of a base, hero has got to be attacked. Uh, if I put that uh, 
pet out there on Dovekeeper, uh, being fairly certain that Dove is going to take attack coming from the perimeter then I'm going to be pretty much guaranteeing myself that heal. So make sure it is on a hero that is up front, that is uh, uh, taking damage, and that is in the thick of things, in the thick of combat. Let's move on next. We have ourselves Piblob. Uh, Piblob is a uh, hero that does some damage. Yeah, sure. But it also lowers the accuracy of the enemy. That's really where Piblob shines. Uh, the lower the accuracy of the enemy, the uh, higher chance that the enemy is going to miss you. Uh, the better, the higher accuracy of the enemy, the better chance that you're going to get hit. So you want the enemy to have a low accuracy, and Piblob will help with that uh, to a factor of 24%. Now, when this happens, it will happen to four enemies but they must be in the vicinity, in that, uh, I'm going to say, you know, 10 square region, you know, about this region of the, of the uh, Castle Clash board, for it to be actually functioning and operating against the enemy. This uh, effect lasts for four seconds with a cooldown of five seconds. The skill lasts for four seconds, cooldown's only five. We only have to wait for one second. We're only without Piblob's abilities for one second until Piblob fires off again. Uh, Piblob has a very low wait time, low cooldown time. This is a pet that will only function when the hero is attacking. So we have ourselves a uh, Dove Keeper here. We would want to put uh, Piblob on somebody like Dove who's right out there at the exterior of your base or somebody who's up in front in combat who's uh, pretty much guaranteed to be uh, uh, smashing into the enemy and doing direct attacks. Piblob, I will note, uh, in certain game modes, I'd say uh, things like an Archdemon, um, maybe even an Ember Army, uh, certain warden challenges, uh, boss battles, anything where the uh, the enemy is a tremendous beast, and also where you're not fighting a whole bunch of them, uh, Piblob can really make a difference. It can lower the accuracy of that enemy. Uh, if you were going to be hit for <laughs> Uh, half a million damage by the Archdemon, well, now you have a 24% better chance that the Archdemon is just going to miss you. Uh, so Piblob's great for that. Now, if you're being attacked by an entire horde of uh, Castle Clash enemies, Piblob's only going to be affecting four of them. So Piblob's not a crowd controller. Uh, Piblob is somebody who can release uh you from some pretty sticky, sticky situations, uh, but only at four heroes at a time. Let's get uh, our buddy Atlanta Core off of there. Okay, we have ourselves Glacy. Okay, Glacy is a very interesting pet. I, I hope I can remember to talk about its many dimensions here. Glacy is uh, a sprite, a uh, uh, and a little ice friend that's flying around in the air next to the hero to which it is attached. Now, at the beginning of its skill activation, it will shoot out a, uh, a copy of itself, like a little uh, semi-visible illusion. It'll look like Glacy, but it's just like a, a little elusive, sort of Ronin-esque version of Glacy it'll shoot out forward. It'll shoot out with a purpose. Okay. The purpose is to attack towers. That means stun towers, cannon towers, uh, arrow towers in this game. In fact, Glacy is programmed to attack towers first. Uh, if there could be uh, uh, 10 enemies in front of you, 
and Glacy's gonna bypass all of them, fly over to some useless arrow tower and start attacking that arrow tower. Uh, Glacy's primary purpose is to attack towers. It will freeze the tower. Boy, this can be helpful, especially in something like dungeons. Uh, it will freeze up those stun towers, and when it does, the stun towers will no longer be functioning. It does some damage, yes, but that freeze uh, and the fact that it attacks up to seven buildings at a time, seven towers uh, or a variety of towers and buildings in a certain area, uh, that's really what makes the difference. That freeze uh, is going to last for 4.6 seconds. During that time, the cooldown factor uh, is lower than the freeze time. So let me say that the freeze on the tower will last longer than the time that Glacy has to recharge itself. So that means a new Glacy illusion with freeze attached to it is going to come flying out before the first freeze has stopped. That is amazing. You can freeze up anything around you again and again and again as long as your hero continues to stay alive. Uh, once your hero's dead, Glacy's gone too. This is a, a pet that will only function when the hero is attacked. So, go back to our base example. Not something you would want on an Anubis right there, but somebody that you would want on the exterior of a base. Or, for example, and I think far more routinely a use, uh, somebody you drop first on the board. Dungeon scenario, put that on your first hero. Put that on your second hero. A hero where you can ensure yourself it is going to be attacked, taking damage, under direct attack. There is one other element to Glacy, and it is an element that will make the difference for you in terms of scores in this game. Glacy attacks towers. It is programmed to do that. But in the absence of buildings, Glacy will attack enemies. Let's look at the Archdemon. You go to Archdemon, there's not a single building on that board. It's just an Archdemon. There's not a single tower. No building, no tower of any kind. Glacy's programming then shifts to uh, plan B. And that plan B is to now attack the enemy. So Glacy, due to the fact that its skills and abilities are in such a uh, frequent use, Glacy can give you those super high scores. So do not be uh, cautious of using Glacy in something like an Archdemon. will work wonderfully. Uh, one of these weird wor warden challenges that we sometimes go through, whatever it may be. So keep it in mind, we'll attack an enemy if there are no buildings on the board. Move on to Reapser. Reapser is a, uh, a guy who slashes the enemy. Yeah, he does some damage. And, and I, I hope that a theme is developing in terms of damage. We're not looking for... Uh, damage from these pets our heroes do a, a hundred times more damage or if you just take this base multiplier already 60 percent more damage just from the hero worry about damage from these pets look at what it is that they do in terms of their ability so what uh, reapster is going to do is he's going to lower the attack speed of the enemy now this uh attack is going to happen in a certain area. It's one of those uh, area of effects within a certain number of squares on the board. Uh, you've got yourself, let's see, a 
65% attack speed reduction. So very much like Little Havoc, uh, the second pet that we looked at, it's going to lower the enemy's ability to hit you as quickly and lower it to a factor of 65%. That's going to last for five seconds. Look at that cooldown. The skill activation time matches the cooldown time. So Reapster will, uh, for all intents and purposes, Reapster is going to be always functioning. There may be a, a, a millisecond of reset time uh, buried in there in the programming, certainly. Okay, now, I want to save myself that comment from in the from the uh, the, the peanut galleries, but uh, we have ourselves pretty much the same activation time as well as uh, cooldown time. Reefster is great for that. So lowering attack speed, great for something like a, a big demon that's coming your way, somebody that's uh, maybe doing a little too much damage at this point in your uh, Castle Clash career, and you want to be able to survive a little bit longer in combat, well, lower the attack speed of the enemy. Reefster is great like, with that. Okay, there's a whole nother element to Reefster. When the hero to which it is attached dies reefster will summon a helper a, a, a little sprite to fight alongside the hero uh and for example i'll take atlanta core uh atlanta core has to die for this little helper to be summoned and start helping in battle that little uh helper has a built-in scatter uh it's got elusive sort of like a ronin meaning it can't uh, take direct attack it's it's, it's functioning in some sort of a netherworld uh that little helper uh is a great thing to pair a reapster is a great pet to pair with a hero that has a revive when the hero dies this shade this helper in combat will be summoned now because of the revive your hero comes back to life. So now you've got the hero and Reapster and the Little Shade all functioning for the price of one. Uh, so the limitation of the hero having to die can be circumvented to some degree by using a hero with revive. Uh, for example, I will often, if not always, uh, in attack uh, situations, pair Anubis with Reefster. Anubis dies three times. Uh, keeps coming back to life. Well, Reefster will keep summoning shades. So it is a great way to get max benefit out of Reefster. Uh, Reefster is a hero that will only function when the hero is a, a pet that will only function when the hero is attacked. So, uh, up here with Dove, we know she's going to be attacked when the enemy starts coming in at the perimeter. If we place it on Anubis in his current location, he's not going to be under direct attack. Not until the enemy is smashed through the other four heroes at the perimeter, destroyed most of my base, and is right up in his face. So, if we had Reapster on Anubis and we were to place him right here at the edge, we would be pretty much uh, guaranteeing that the uh, hero is or that the uh, pet is going to be operating let's move on to punching box okay punching box is a weird one uh punching box we have three kinds of, of pets those that operate while the hero is attacking those that operate while the hero is under attack and those that are operating all the time punching boxes uh, like mini angie one of those pets that's going to be operating all the time. So let's say we place it on Anubis right here in the center. Okay, we'll get back to that in a second. But for now, let's just pretend we're putting it on Anubis right there in the center of our base. What punching box would then be doing is this. Every six seconds, one hero close to Anubis. In this example, it would be... Uh, either Walla Walla or Anubis himself, in that zone, in that uh, about 10 square range. 
a, near, a nearby hero, Anubis or Walla Walla. That hero is going to be uh, given a attack boost. It's going to be made stronger. Uh, that's going to last for four seconds. Also, it's going to allow that hero to do a little extra uh, attack damage against the enemy. What you're really interested in is the fact that it boosts or buffs the attack ability of your hero. Uh, Punching Box is uh, a pet that's functioning on a four-second cooldown. Okay, the effect of the attack boost is four seconds. So Punching Box effectively, uh, a millisecond here or there, but effectively Punching Box is going to be working at all times. Punching Box requires, and I know I said that Punching Box is a pet that's going to be functioning all the time, but let's look at something in terms of theory and practicality. Uh, If I put Punching Box on Anubis, Anubis is going to get a big attack boost. Also, Walla Walla can get one because he's nearby. All right. But if Nubis or Walla, if they can't attack from a distance, then the attack boost they're getting is a moot point. Why even have it? So, if you have heroes in the interior of your base that are able to uh, attack from a distance that are able to put out a global attack, that are able to uh, be long-range attackers, then punching boxes is just fine. In fact, uh, uh, preferred. It's going to give that big boost. If you have heroes in the center of your base that are not uh, going to be attacking the enemy with that now big attack boost, then it's not going to be helping you in any way. The, uh, the boost will still be applied, yes, but it's not going to actually be doing anything functional in the game of Castle Clash. So put the punching box on those who are going to be seeing some action, who are actually going to be engaging in combat of some kind. Uh, a great uh, pet, a great uh, hero to put him with, Minotaur Chieftain. If you uh, have a minnow, You put a punching box on Minnow, punching box buffs, boosts Minnow, and now all of a sudden he's cracking bases in two. Uh, So if you are slogging your way through the dungeons as I am, uh, punching box is on your Minnow, uh, just like he's been on mine through my journey through these uh, Insane 8 series. Next we have Fennec Pet. Fennec is... uh, in my opinion, the best healing pet that we have. Uh, Fennec is going to restore the health of your team, up to four of your your heroes on your team, and he's going to cast a shield. Now, the shield will not prevent damage, but what the shield will do is it'll block something bad happening to your four team members there. Uh, That could be a stun tower stopping you in your tracks. Well, that'll be prevented. Uh, It could be... um, uh, maybe a slowdown or some sort of a, a, a stun from a hero's ability of some kind. That will be prevented. These four allies will be uh, healed and then shielded from a negative condition for, uh, for 2.5 seconds. Now the cooldown is the same duration as the effect. So that uh, shield is going to be working all the time with a a millisecond or two of pre-programmed interior reset time. That uh, Fennec pet is one of those heroes, or one of those uh, pets that is functioning under the category of only operating when the hero is attacked. Now, I love Fennec. Uh, I love Fennec's ability to heal your team and to provide that uh, shield from a negative status. But make sure that it is on a hero that's going to be under attack. One of the first heroes you drop out on the board, 
one of the heroes that is right up there in the front of the line. If I put it on Anubis here, he's not going to be under direct attack until it's too late, until my base is all smashed up. If I put it on Dove, I know she's going to be under direct attack as the enemies come in from the sides of the screen. Uh, Fennec is a wonderful, wonderful pet to have and a great addition to the game. Best healer in my opinion. Okay, now we are moving on to a different tier. If you see the golden border around Fennec, all of these pets have a golden border. Now as we move from Draco on down, we have ourselves a silver border. This is how the game distinguishes between a legendary pet and an ordinary pet. Very much like our heroes. Uh, you get a purple hero in a roll when you're rolling gems. It's a legendary hero. If you get one of those uh, uh, greens or blues, like an executioner or maybe a marauder or something, that's an ordinary. So the golden pets that we've just gone through are the ones that are the most powerful, uh, typically have the best attributes, stats, abilities, uh, and are able to function to the highest degree in this game. Now we get to the ordinaries. Uh, while they are of perhaps a uh, lower status or ability, some of them can be invaluable. And in fact, some of them I even prefer to the legendaries, uh, especially in particular game modes. So under the uh, ordinaries, we begin with Draco. Draco is a pet that does some damage, yes, but it reduces the energy of the enemy. It's like a scatter. Uh, you're dealing with uh, uh, demons and bosses that, that have an energy bar that can actually be affected, where there's a, a where scatter is able to, uh, I think a boss five, the boss five battle, the old, you know, pretty old school uh, guild boss five. Uh, that is a hero, uh, a enemy where you'd want to use Draco. You want to lower the energy, Draco is your man. Uh, Draco is going to lower the the enemy's energy by 50. Now, there is a cooldown time, but the cooldown time is relatively short, 2.5 seconds. Uh, that energy reduction is like a scatter. It is not like... like uh, uh, where were we? It's not like Persolot, who uh, reduces the ability of the enemy to regain energy. It is actually a straight-up scatter. Uh, and Draco does a nice job of, of reducing that uh, energy. Now, the, the downside to this, look at that first line. 40% chance. So, you are working with a low percentage chance. In fact, a better chance than not that Draco is not going to be uh, uh, operating in this fashion. So, this is another reason why it's an ordinary uh, that low percentage chance, but Draco is a pretty fast attacker. And because of that, uh, the speed at which Draco operates tends to mitigate the low percentage chance of it actually uh, inflicting that uh, skill description. Uh, Draco is a, here, a uh, pet that is often used in uh, something like an Archdemon or in damage capped modes where the enemy can only take a certain amount of damage, and that's it. Draco's uh, faster attack speed and ability to also to scatter uh, these types of uh, enemies uh, tends to help you get a little bit higher scores. We have ourselves Aurora next. Now you can see that the skill descriptions of these pets uh, are not nearly as lengthy as the legendaries, the gold. Uh, they're pretty straightforward, these ordinary uh, pets. They don't have as many dimensions or facets to them. Uh, explaining one of those reapsters or pet or punching boxes, that, that takes five minutes apiece. Uh, but these are a little bit more straightforward, a little bit more concise. Aurora, yeah, Aurora does damage, but Aurora can stun. That stun lasts for 2.4 seconds. That stun uh, can inflict, uh, can affect three enemies. 
Now, they are random enemies, and they say random nearby enemies. So again, we're dealing with that uh, approximate 10 square range. Enemies got to be somewhere around here. Uh, got to be uh, within a nearby vicinity of, of um, the pet. But that, uh, that stun uh, will only affect three out of the six uh, heroes that are in your general area. So uh, it won't affect the entire enemy team. There is a very, very lengthy cooldown period. 4.8 seconds. This makes Aurora, I, in my opinion, an ineffective pet. Uh, and then in addition, there is only a 50% chance of these skill effects even taking place. So you actually have a coin flips chance of Aurora even doing anything. And then when it does do that, you're still going to be waiting and let's take a look at the activation time and cooldown time. Now, we've discussed this a couple of times here in this video. Uh, 2.4 seconds, that stun's going to operate. But the cooldown is 4.8. So for an additional 2.4 seconds after the stun, nothing's going to be happening. And in order to even have that happen, you only have to... You have to hit the 50% uh, coin flip. So Aurora is not somebody I, I tend to rely on in terms of pets uh, or use all that often if I can help it. Uh, good to put on somebody who can inflict stun. Uh, somebody like a Sasquatch. Uh, Aurora will only function when the hero is attacked. Don't want to put it on Anubis in this scenario. Want to put it on one of these exterior heroes. But if you have a Sasquatch, uh, somebody who can inflict a stun like uh, he can, uh, then it can be very helpful if you put him up in the front row. Want to make sure he is being attacked. Okay, Phoenix. Uh, Phoenix is one of my favorite pets. Uh, I use Phoenix uh, more often sometimes than the uh, gold heroes, uh, the gold uh, pets. Uh, Phoenix is going to do damage, yes, 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 but far better. It is going to reduce the movement speed of the enemy and reduce it by a whopping 60%. So they're going to be slow as, as molasses as they walk their way across the board. This can give your whole team the time to charge up their skills, to prepare themselves for battle, uh, to find the right position uh, for defense. Uh, Phoenix is excellent in doing that movement speed slowdown. This is another thing that Phoenix can do. This is an area of effect. So there is a, I'm going to say in this case, probably about a six square. I'm going to take this tower, let's say like right around here, probably about that much space on the board is going to be affected by Phoenix's uh, fiery explosion when it finally lands. And in that area, for three seconds, everybody's movement speed is going to be reduced by 60%. You take a look at that, uh, take a look at that cooldown time and take a look at the uh, movement speed time as well as the uh, area of effect time. Okay, if we want movement speed, let's look at that. We've got the movement speed reduction for two and a half seconds. We've got a cooldown at 3.2. Phoenix has only got to wait for 0.7 seconds. Go a, a blink of an eye before it recharges and fires off again. A wonderful, wonderful pet. Uh, a multifaceted pet that helps your whole team to be better. Now, the downside. There is only a 42% chance of any of this actually happening. But because the cooldown is so little, uh, that 42% chance is made a little bit better. Uh, Phoenix is going to be operating, um, is going to be functioning 
uh, very uh, quickly. Uh, low cooldown time, so thereby you at least have a little bit better chance of this 42% uh, actually coming up. Uh, actually landing on heads when you call heads. So, uh, Phoenix is one of my favorites. I think a great pet to pair with somebody like Walla Walla. Uh, somebody who already has got a movement speed slowdown against an enemy. A uh, Phoenix, uh, Walla can hit one group of enemies, slow them down. Phoenix goes, throws that fireball out. Boom, all of a sudden another couple of enemies get that movement slow. Uh, and you can really take a whole team uh, to a, a snail's crawl across the board. Okay, AVR. Another ordinary pet. Under the... Uh, the category of attack okay so you want to have it on the exterior of your base or up there in the front uh, making sure that the hero is attacking uh, making sure that the avr is even going to function to begin with avr is going to do some damage sure but even better avr is going to silence the enemy just like Ares does Take away the enemy's ability to use its skill entirely. Not just reduce energy like a scatter. Not reduce regen rate like a Persolot does. But take away that ability to use the skill entirely. That silence will last for three seconds. Cool down to four. We only have one second where AVR silence is not operating. Wow. Here's the downside. Downside is you only have a 65% chance of this even occurring. Now, I find in terms of pets, uh, that's not a, a terrible percentage. It's actually among the higher percentages when it comes to pets. I do outfit uh, several of my heroes with AVR when I get the chance and when it's good for the game mode. Uh, heroes that naturally have a, uh, a silence of some kind, like an Ares. Uh, oftentimes I might put AVR on Demogorgon. I know that he doesn't have a silence, but he has a blind. I see that, that it pairs very well with silence. Uh, you put a blindfold on the enemy and you take away their ability to use their skill. Uh, so you go through the skill descriptions of your heroes and think to yourself, uh, how would it benefit this particular hero? How would these pets in general benefit this hero? And where, where can we combine them? to make them better at what it is they already do. So AVR is a good uh, pet to have. Again, it is uh, when the hero is attacking. So you want to make sure you are attacking with your hero for AVR to even function. If it's here in Anubis in the center, AVR is not going to be doing anything. Okay, Doom Balloon. Doom Balloon is an ordinary pet, and it only does one thing. It does damage to buildings. Uh, it is under that uh, very rare category of a pet that is always functioning, always working. The uh, enemy, or the uh, friendly hero to which it is attached uh, doesn't have to necessarily be directly attacking, doesn't have to be directly under attack. As long as that hero is out on the board, Doom Balloon's going to be working. Doom Balloon's going to be uh, doing damage to five buildings at a time. Sending out five uh, little rockets, if you will. Only buildings will receive damage. If there are no buildings on the board, Doom Balloon will do nothing. It will not attack enemy heroes so no living thing will be doom balloons enemy doom balloon will only attack inanimate objects like buildings and towers just like with glacy doom balloon is programmed to attack towers but sadly unlike glacy doom balloon can't make that switch over to attacking heroes so uh and i've seen many many uh a hero outfitted with a doom balloon uh in game modes where 
the only enemy is a, a living thing. And I think, oh, yeah, I'd love to tell that. I'd love to message this person and say, hey, Doom Balloon's not doing anything for you. Try Glacy. Try somebody else here. Uh, so please keep that in mind. Doom Balloon is only for smashing up bases, a raiding, uh, a Guild Wars attack scenario, the dungeons. It can make the difference. Make or break a dungeon for you. If you're trying to make progress in the dungeons, outfit somebody strong and sturdy who's going to live a long time. Outfit that hero with Doom Balloon. You're going to do a lot more damage in those, uh, in those game modes. Uh, the damage that the buildings take is going to be increased by 26%. Okay? So for uh, if so every uh, three seconds, no, for three seconds, those buildings can take more damage. So either uh, another hit from Doom Balloon, uh, maybe a hit from uh, somebody who, uh, let's say you put it on a, a Dove Keeper and her Love Doves are hitting buildings and they often uh, often will uh, doom balloon when under the effect of that damage increase doom balloon is going to cause those buildings to take 26 six percent more damage so the love doves are going to clear out buildings rather quickly uh, a great building buster a great bait base buster uh, doom balloon is an excellent pet in and only in that regard and serves really no other purpose in the game of Castle Clash. It will be a uh, inanimate pet at the side of your hero uh, in anything other than building or base busting. Next, Celestin. Uh, Celestin is a hero that does some damage. Yeah, sure. But more importantly, the uh, Celestin pet will take away the buffs of the enemy. A buff is a positive impact or a positive status. It makes a, a hero stronger. So when your enemies are all buffed up, it means that they've been made stronger. Well, Celestin is going to remove those buffs, those positive statuses from one nearby enemy hero. Now, that does... Uh, dramatically limit Celestin's use, you're attacked by six heroes. Well, Celestin's only going to affect one of them. So that is a limitation. Uh, the cooldown time is 3.5 seconds. That is a rather lengthy amount of time for Celestin to be recharging. That is a, uh, a downside as well. But worse of all, just like with many of these ordinary pets, there is approximately a coins flip. 56% chance that this uh, pet's going to be doing anything to begin with. Uh, so, Celestin is somebody that I uh, typically stay away from if I can help it. But if I am going to use Celestin, uh, I am going to put Celestin with a uh, somebody who's all, who already debuffs the enemy. Let's try to make our castle clash heroes stronger and better at what they do rather than trying to make them generalists or jacks of all trades so uh somebody who's already a, a deep buffer who's taken away positive statuses uh you know like a walla or even a, an ashura who's already uh, taking away uh, energy the moment he drops that on the board uh, it can work uh, very well uh, so Celestin is one of those uh, pets that only is functioning when the hero attacks. Again, a perimeter pet, uh, a pet that's going to be on your guys up in the front row where they're directly attacking. Uh, Walla in here, even with an Empower, it's just not going to be functioning the way you want it to or at all. So you've got to make sure that your hero is going to be attacking the enemy. Okay. Last but not least, we have ourselves Bublo. Now, he's the last of the ordinary pets. Bublo is a healer. I would rate, uh, in my opinion, I would rate Bublo as the third best healing pet we have in Castle Clash. Uh, number one would be our friend Fennec. Two would be Rudolph. And three, I would say, is Bublo. 
The only reason I don't put uh, Minnie Angie, although she is a gold uh, legendary pet, the only reason I don't put her higher, uh, the reason I put her in last place, is because she only affects one hero. Uh, but Bublo affects three. Gives three of your, your buddies, your teammates in combat, a nice heal. Uh, that heal happens every four seconds. And in addition, your heroes, those three uh, heal, uh, healed heroes, are going to get a big movement speed boost. So they're going to be able to move from point A to point B in a much greater uh, rate, 60% uh, faster. Now you see that the uh, effect is two seconds. And that, uh, that, that effect, that movement speed boost, when you see it in action, it could be something like a dungeon scenario, you're going to be moving from the north of the board to the south of the board uh, at a much, much greater rate. Uh, any time that you're going to want to make distance in this game, and there aren't many times. A lot of Castle Clash is very uh, uh, static. You're, you're right there. You're not really moving, and you're just bashing against something. Uh, a boss battle, for example. Uh, in that scenario, the movement speed boost would be uh, meaningless. You're not actually moving. But if you are going from point A to point B, north of the board to the south of the board, east to the west, uh, if you want to clear some distance, uh, Bublo can help tremendously. And in addition, provide you heals. Bublo is one of those pets, a uh, rarest of pets, uh, another reason I, I rank uh, Bublo higher than Mini Angie is be it's because Bublo will always be working. Okay, so if we go back to our board uh, scenario here, uh, Bublo, no matter where Bublo, what hero Bublo is attached to, Bublo will always be functioning. So uh, you want to put uh, Bublo on Anubis right here in the center? That's perfectly fine. Anubis' uh, buddy Bublo is going to keep pumping out heals every couple of seconds and giving your, uh, some of your teammates a uh, movement speed boost. So great stuff uh, when it comes to um, affecting your entire team in a positive way. Uh, Bublo is able to do that and do it very, very well. So these, uh, these pets, the answer to the question I, I, I can do a, a, a video series on this down the road but the answer to the question uh, which pet should I pair with which hero you need to first look at your hero altar and take a look at the heroes that you have okay uh, of the heroes that are available in Castle Clash which ones do you have in your altar to pair with a pet uh, I think that pet level and we can go up to 35 I think that pet level has a lot to do with it. I would much rather have an ordinary pet at my side at level 35 than a, uh, a legendary pet at 2. So that has a lot to do with it. Your style of play has a lot to do with it. Uh, I think that how we play this game, and there's no right or wrong. There is personal preference. Uh, how you play this game is going to dictate some of those kinds of choices. I think that also knowing your heroes' uh, skill abilities, that is of paramount importance. Uh, if you know the hero's skill ability well and what that hero does, you can pinpoint, I've said this in video after video, you can pinpoint what it is that hero does best. Instead of trying to uh, give a hero another ability or to try to get that hero to be good at a bunch of different things, look at what your hero does best and pick a pet that will make that hero do it even better. Okay, so whatever that category or dimension or facet of the hero is that is, that is uh, making that hero unique, buff that, strengthen that, through the use of a pet. So uh, if we were going to, I'm going to wrap it up with this. Uh, it's just a real world uh, usage here. 
if we're going to use some pets and there's a ton of different combinations that we can use uh, we have ourselves pets that operate while the hero is attacked pets that operate while the hero is attacking pets that operate all the time right here in the center if we put uh oh like a uh mini angie on our buddy walla walla we know that mini angie will operate at all times so one hero out here on the board it doesn't have to be walla specifically but one hero out here on the board is going to get that damage reduction and that heal uh, we've got ourselves Anubis here in the center. We know he's not going to be directly attacking. We know he's not going to be under direct attack, at least until it, not until it's too late and the entire base has been smashed and the heroes are right up in his face. So we put Bublo on him. And we know that Bublo is always going to be operating, giving a nice heal and a speed boost. Good uh, pet to have right there. Uh, now, these four out here on the board in the corners... We know that they're going to be attacking, and we definitely know that they're going to be under attack. They're at the perimeter, so we want to use uh, pets that can uh, operate under one of those two categories. Now, those are many different pets, uh, those two categories, attack or attacking. So we want to probably start with our gold legendaries. Uh, one, for example, might be uh, Piblob. Great. When the hero attacks, reduces the accuracy. That's, that's great. It's going to do a real nice job at getting us to not even be hit. A blinded enemy is an enemy that can't hit you. So I put it on Dove. I know that Dove is going to be attacking. I've got uh, Laz down here in the lower left-hand corner. I know the guy's going to be attacked. Of course, Laz is a magnet when it comes to attack. Uh, let me put uh, take a look at this. Uh, Yulafan. Yulafant operates when the hero is attacked. I put Yulafant on my uh, buddy Laz, and all of a sudden, there's that dodge boost applied uh, throughout the uh, board to different heroes, as well as um, a little bit of that immunity to uh, a negative a stun or a fear. Uh, we've got ourselves uh, Lavanica out here. I know Lava's going to be attacking. That's the man's specialty. Uh, is attacking and he's right there at the perimeter so i'm going to want to outfit him with a pet that operates when the hero is attacking and we look at uh chickaboom when the hero attacks put our chickaboom on here and all of a sudden when the enemy starts sliding down in right around this this e that i'm moving around sliding down in here for the attack chickaboom's going to hit the enemy Chickaboom's also going to grant 32% more damage in combat. When the enemy comes and meets lava, the enemy's not going to last too long. Good, uh, good pet, good scenario. And we've got Rosaline down here in the right-hand corner. Rose is going to be uh, under attack. Of course she is. She's always under attack. She's right there at the perimeter. She's always in the thick of things. So this, this woman knows what she's doing. Uh, she, she can clear house. Take a look at our um, pet selection. What do we got? Hero attacks. Yep, yep. Oh, let's take a look at this. Rudolph. Nice healing pet. Uh, when the uh, hero is attacked is when it's going to be functioning. There are plenty of, of different uh, pets to choose from. But if we put this uh, Rudolph on Rosaline, we know that Rudolph is going to be functioning. When Rosa gets attacked, Rudolph will operate. So you can go through the entire uh, pet plaza of now 19 pets in the game of Castle Clash as of the uh, recording date today. Uh, and you can make the decisions based on your gameplay, your style, uh, how they best suit you, but most importantly, how they make an already strong team of heroes even stronger find those things that your heroes do best and make them even better at that thing uh, i want to thank you all for uh tuning in uh i want to uh give a big shout out to uh the guild uh thank you all for showing so much faith in what we're trying to achieve this has become a real team effort we keep gathering new 
uh, guild members on a daily basis. We're doing very, very nicely. Uh, we're also getting the new update probably in a couple of hours. Probably after I click uh, end on this, it'll probably show me that uh, screen. We are going down for maintenance. And then uh, tomorrow will be a brand new day in Castle Clash. I want to thank you for tuning in. I want to thank you all for the, your support on the channel. Uh, subscriber number is growing, but I was not making a YouTube channel uh, in order for uh, to accumulate subscribers. I was making a YouTube channel in order to uh, document uh, this amazing game. And some of the things that I do as a player... I've gotten a couple of questions over the years. Hey, what should I do here with this hero? What should I do with that hero? Uh, what should I do with these pets, for example? Uh, and I always thought, you know what? It would be better to be able to answer that question to a larger sum of people uh, rather than on an individual basis. So it's just a real privilege to be able to be part of the Castle Clash conversation and to help keep this community alive. Uh, thank you all for tuning in, and I'll check you on the next video. All right, bye-bye.